Welcome to City on a Hill Kids Church Online. I'm Lola. And I'm Jimmy. Today we're going to be talking about how we are a Holy Spirit church. But that will be after a time of worship. My God is so big and so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big and so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big and so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big and so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. In the beginning, God made everything. God simply spoke. For the past couple of weeks, we've been talking about the fact that our church is a word church. What does that even mean? Well, the Bible is the word of God. And it means that we believe everything that is written in the Bible because it is the word of God. We believe everything it stands for. We believe everything that it says. As it leads us in right living it leads us in how we should relate with god and how we should relate with each other as human beings have you heard of the phrase all bark and no bite do you know what it means well for those of you who don't know what it means it means that Someone who just talks and talks and talks and whatever they say is not followed up by any action or with any power, that person is considered as all talk. So they talk, but the words that are used to talk 
don't amount to very much. Actually, they don't amount to anything. We are a word church and we get the power or the power is put in these words by the Holy Spirit. I'll stop here and just mention something that you may have known or if you don't know, you'll know now. God is three in one, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. God the Father, God the Son, that's Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit. They are one because they are always working together. Back to the topic. Generally, the Holy Spirit is empowering. He gives gifts and abilities for service. Wherever or whenever he is present, things happen. And when God's word is spoken in the right place, in the right circumstances, these words are backed up by the power and the ability of the Holy Spirit. I don't know if I've quoted this before. Um, it comes from the book of Isaiah where it says that the word, his word, does not return to him void, but accomplishes that for which he has sent it. That means that God's word is powerful. It has a purpose and it does exactly what it says. Now, we hear accounts of the working of the Holy Spirit in the Bible. But, but, but the way the Holy Spirit worked in the Old Testament times is quite different from the way the Holy Spirit works in the New Testament times. He was still powerful or he is still powerful no matter what time, whether Old Testament or New Testament, but the manner in which he worked was a bit different. This week I will show you with a couple of stories of how the Holy Spirit worked in Old Testament or in the Old Testament times. Now, do you remember Gideon? You can read about him in the book of Judges in the Old Testament. Well, he was a bit of a scaredy cat. And actually, you wouldn't blame him because in his time, the Israelites were being persecuted by the Midianites and the Amalekites. So what would happen would be that during the harvest time that the Midianites would now come in hordes. They would come in really large numbers and come into the land of Israel and mop up all their crop, their livestock, and then leave the Israelites poor and hungry. To the point that if anybody had any crop, they would have to hide in caves and, you know, hidden places to maybe sort out the crop. And that's what happened with Gideon. Now, the children of Israel now prayed to God for somebody to deliver them, for a deliverer. And God did find a deliverer. He found a deliverer in Gideon. And as I said, Gideon was a scaredy cat. And he asked God to prove to him that it was actually him, that's Gideon, that God was talking about. Anyway, long story short, the spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon. Yes, that scaredy cat. The spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon and this gave Gideon the boldness to be able to speak with people, gather people and defeat the enemies of Israel, defeat the Midianites and the Amalekites. So the Holy Spirit came upon him for a purpose. Uh, as I said, you can read about this in the book of Judges, Judges chapter 6 to chapter 8. And then the Spirit left. Another person that the Spirit of the Lord came upon, that's the Holy Spirit came upon, was Bezalel. When the children of Israel left Egypt, remember they wandered in the wilderness. But while in the wilderness, God had asked for a tabernacle to be built. A tabernacle is a mobile temple. And this tabernacle was to be built according to the pattern. 
there would be all sorts of things in the um, tabernacle. There would be curtains, poles, there was an altar, there were bowls, there were all sorts of things. And these things had to be made from scratch. They were beautiful. And as I said, they had to be made according to the pattern that God had given. One had to be really gifted to be able to make, build, design all these things. And indeed, there was somebody that the Holy Spirit came upon and gave him great wisdom, ability, expertise in all sorts of crafts. I mean, he was a master craftsman and his name was Bezalel. He could work in gold, in silver, in bronze. He could engrave things. He could mount gemstones into gold, into silver and things like that. And he knew how to carve beautiful things out of wood. As I said, this man's name was Bezalel. He wasn't the only person, both he, Bezalel, and another person called Aholiab were also given the ability to be able to teach other people so that they would have lots of hands working on all these things that God had asked to be made and built. They were both excellent craftsmen and designers. The Holy Spirit also came upon uh, kings. Remember David when Samuel anointed David to be king. The Holy Spirit came upon David from that day. I've just talked about a few examples of the working of the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. He stayed on people for a while. For whatever purpose it is that the people had, he would stay on people and then he would leave. He empowered prophets, priests, kings, judges, in special ways, gifting them for service. Not everyone had the Holy Spirit upon them, just these ones that I mentioned. And that's what it was like in the Old Testament. And today, that's the end of the story. Hello everybody. I love how we see the Holy Spirit coming in through the pages of the Old Testament and bringing his power <laughs> into the lives of people like Gideon and King Saul and transforming them. I remember, oh dear, the word for Holy Spirit is the same as the word for wind. It's like the power. He's like the power of the wind that we can't see but comes in and transforms. And so I thought we'd make these windmills. I'm not doing a very good job at blowing this one, am I? I thought we'd make these windmills to remind us of the power of the Holy Spirit. So we have made these before, but they're good fun. So for it, you need a square of paper. So do you remember what you can do is take a four, fold it over and cut off the strip. Now, if you have a square this size, it will make a windmill this big. Or with the strip that was cut off, I then folded that over and made a little square, oops, and that made a windmill this size. So you can choose what size of windmill you want to make. Now, the other thing I did was because I wanted two colours, I've used orange and white, as you can see, I actually cut out two squares like this, and I'm going to glue them together so I've got one double-sided piece of paper with two different colours, but you don't have to do that. It's fine just to have one colour, but particularly while I'm doing the demonstration, it's much easier to see with two colours. And I also thought it looks quite good. And can you guess why I've chosen orange and white? It's because of two other symbols for the Holy Spirit that we see in the Bible, as well as wind. He's described like a dove and he's described like fire. So when you have your square of paper ready, you want to fold it diagonally both ways. So it was already folded one way for me, and I'll fold it the other way, so that we've got these lines. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to cut along these lines and fold them to make our windmill, but we don't want to cut right to the centre, or else the whole thing would fall apart. So you want to leave about a five centimetre 
section in the middle that you're not cutting. So for A4 squares, like this one, one that's made from this from piece of A4, I'm drawing lines that are 12 centimetres long into the middle. Do you see that? And I'm going to cut along those. Obviously, if you're making a smaller one, make them smaller. It doesn't really matter so long as they're all the same length as each other. So we'll cut along all of these lines like this. And then if you've got two colours, you need to decide which side you want to be, as it were, the inside, that colour you want to the front, and which colour you want to be the outside you want that colour to be the back. So this one, I'm going to have the white as the outside. So what you're going to do is take these flaps one at a time and just put some glue on the middle there and fold it and stick it in the middle. Then move around to the next one and we keep going the same way around so it's got rotational symmetry. Fold that one into the middle and stick it. Then take the next one, fold it into the middle and stick it down. And finally, the last one. Put some glue on it and fold this into the middle and stick it down. And there we have our windmill. So now all we need to do is attach it onto a stick. So I've used pencils. Obviously for this small one, that looks much better. It's a better size than for this huge one when the pencil's a little bit small. But the pencil's a good thing to use. It won't damage the pencil. So there are different ways of doing this. Last time we did it, what I suggested is that you take a pencil and with a drawing pin, you stick it through the middle of your windmill and into the rubber on the end of the pencil. And that works quite well. But I'm just going to show you another way of doing it today. First, you need to make a hole in the middle of your windmill. And to do that, I've got a needle that I'm going to poke through. And I've got some fabric behind it. So I'm poking a needle through the centre and then I need the hole to be bigger. So now I've got a little pair of sewing scissors. So you might want some help with this, you need to be careful. And I'm sticking those through that central hole. You see that? And I'm just going to wiggle them about a bit to make a big enough hole. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to put a pipe cleaner through this hole. And you do need to make the hole quite big. I found I found with these ones that because the pipe cleaner has quite a lot of friction because it's fuzzy, if the hole isn't big enough, your windmill won't spin and that won't really demonstrate <laughs> the power of the Holy Spirit if you have a spin windmill. So you need to make a reasonable sized hole in the back of your windmill. Then what you're going to do oops, is take a pipe cleaner and take pencil and we're just going to attach the pipe cleaner onto the pencil at one end like that and then we're going to poke the pipe cleaner through the hole like this. Now at this point what you need to do is check that your windmill will spin okay if it won't you need to go back and make the hole bigger that one is just about spinning. And then finally, all we need to do is fold up this last piece of pipe cleaner so that it makes a kind of a stopper. And there we have it. Now, I think these ones are a little bit large. I think these smaller ones may be a bit better, but these big ones are fun too. <laughs> it was good for demonstrating. <laughs> there we are. So, really fun to make. You can decorate them however you like. And they're quick as well, so you could make lots of them windmills to remind us of the power of the Holy Spirit who can come into our lives and change us from just being something static to being something amazing, like these little windmills. Well, I hope you enjoy making windmills. I hope you enjoy studying the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. And we'll be back next week to talk some more about the Holy Spirit. I'll see you then. Bye. All bark and no bite. I like that phrase. I hope you know what it means. I do. It means that you talk a lot, but you have no actions to follow it. Essentially, you just don't do what you say. 
Yeah. Hmm. You were really paying attention. There's something in the story today that made me really understand that God is one. We serve one God. What's that? God the Father, God the Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. They're all one. Together, they're all one. Today, we talked about the word being backed up, or essentially, having power from the Holy Spirit. Yes, we did. And that he gave powers to people when they needed it. Yes, and we heard that God worked differently from how he worked in the New Testament to how he worked in the Old Testament. Talking about the Old Testament, I've heard Gideon before, the dry fleece and the wet fleece, but I've not heard of Be Bezalel. Oh. Don't forget Aholiab as well. They were expert craftsmen and helped build the tabernacle the mobile temple, when the Israelites were in the wilderness. They had special abilities. Those are names you don't hear too often. I know. I think we should wrap it up here. Today, we have learned that the Holy Spirit gives us special abilities for us to do stuff. That's it for this week. Till next time. Bye! Bye.